Good morning, guys. Um, welcome to A Resellers Life. My name is Chris. On this show, we're going to go over the top tips and exactly how to actually execute them. I'm glad Charlotte's on the call because she had reached out to me, and a lot of people have, saying that sometimes my YouTube channel or these calls make it harder to achieve your goals. And I'm going to show you guys uh, why that is. So you have to have um, a model. So before you listen to this call, try to pick a model, whatever it is. So as an example, let's say you want to make $1,000 a week and you want to do $10 profit an item. That's 100 items times $10 profit a week. That's your goal. So it doesn't matter if this goal is right or not. You just pick one. Then when you listen to ideas on this call, you see if that gets you closer to your goal. If it doesn't, then you write it down and you ignore it, but you still review it. So I'm going to give you guys an example. I just added a bi-monthly review to my schedule. So every two weeks, I'm going to look at my journal, go over the best ideas and make sure I'm executing the ones. So I'm going to give you guys an example of what I've written so far and some ideas that I've actually executed. And then we're going to go around the horn and ask people a tip that they can share. And then you guys write down the tips if you can, this will also be recorded and I'll make a list um, so you guys can go through them and you want to execute the ones that you like the most. So as an example, this month um, I executed a thank you card. They actually arrived yesterday. So a thank you card that has a QR code to get people back into my store or a really good deal uh, and a codeless coupon. So both of those promotions, I figured out how to do them and I executed both of those things into my store. Now I heard and I have not executed that you should message all of your buyers after the sale. You have an opportunity to do some marketing. Thank you for buying something. If you buy something else before I ship it out, I can give you free, you know, $10 off because I can, can save on shipping. That's really valuable. Everyone should have that. The night before you actually ship an item, you can increase your order size. I want to add that, but I haven't yet. But that's something that does get me closer to my goal, especially because you're only paying one shipping cost. So. These are things that I want people writing down on these calls and then executing. But I'm going to give you the five top ideas that I've gotten this month out of three per day. So my goal for May was to write down three things I could do per day and then execute one a day. But I'm going to give you the top five so I don't take up the whole hour. The first one is um, a grading system. This was from Jeffrey Anderson. Um, and I've heard this from a few different people. People use VAs to go through inventory and grade them. If you go to a Plato's Closet or a Buffalo Exchange or a pawn shop, they grade your item. And when people say they've been reselling for a long time and they're an expert, really, they're just really good at grading. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of the things that I grade on, which is, um, is it a contract? When I buy from this person, can I keep buying from this person? Is it business to business or is it a person? Is it multi-quantity or just one? Do I need to test it? Do I need to clean it? Is it fragile? Is it on consignment because then I don't need to use my own money, but there's um, more paperwork on the back end? Is there a UPC code that makes it easier to list? What is the demand? Is it going to sell in a week, a month, three months, or I don't know? So if I was grading this and I don't know how long it's going to take to sell, that would get the lowest score. But if it sells a thousand times a day, that would be the highest score. Um, profit. Is it high profit, high dollar amount? Is it high dollar amount? Is a low profit, high dollar amount? This is going to determine how much money I need to spend to get it. Am I buying it directly from the manufacturer? Can I make it myself? I'm seeing people do pretty well right now manufacturing their own fitness equipment and selling it locally. Very creative. Is it seasonal? Um, does it ship flat rate? Um, and how high is the return rate on the item? Can people return it because of fit, like a pair of jeans? Or is it a purse? where if you provide the dimensions of it, it usually won't be returned because of size. So the number one tip that I executed this month was a grading system. That's gonna really help me pick better inventory. The second one is training a VA to do new processes. This is something that people should do every single month because this brings me to point number three and it's related, which is you have to do more with less. You can't do more with more because you don't have more time. Everyone has the same amount of time. Can't, you have to be more efficient. And so what that means is you have to either buy better inventory or you have to have somebody help you. There's no, you can't, you can only do like 50 to 200 listings a week by yourself normally under normal circumstances, but you can do 9,000 a day like Zulily if you have a team. Okay. 
fourth tip is I got this from Mac in the group, which is you want to buy X amount of profit per day. I really, really love this tip. So I wrote down, I want to buy $1,600 worth of profit a day. So I don't know how to do that, but that's the, um, the, the objective for what you're doing. So with the, that sourcing goal helps you identify where should you go. Brandon sells furniture. If he's going one by one, that's very different than only working with estate, deal, estate sale companies or estate sale lawyers. That's going to give you a different type of customer or only with a local furniture store that ships online and doesn't want to deal with the returns. Those are bigger deals that would cause you um, to have a higher profit buying goal per day. And then the fifth one is a reinvestment strategy. So I just executed this, which is I'm set up as an S corporation. I take a salary out of my business. People have asked me, what do I do with the profit? And my strategy moving forward is going to be a third for business savings. And I'm saving that money to make a larger purchase at some point. The third um, is reinvested into new inventory. So a third goes directly into new inventory. A third just gets saved and a third gets saved for taxes. So that's how I'm going to arrange that. So those are the five things I executed, but I wrote down probably 150 ideas so far from this call. So that's how I want people to approach this. Write down everything. You can only execute a few things. And there's going to be things that you do that you, that you never do again. I'm going to give one example of that and then we'll move to everybody else, which is promoted listings. This month, I'm going to um, leave. I, I started pr promoted listings this month at 7% just to test it, okay, to see what happens, which is a lot. And I've decided that I'm not going to continue this because I pay for cross-listing. So if you're going to pay for promoted listings, your items are going to sell faster. So my, I'm listing on Poshmark and Mercari. My items are selling so fast on eBay. It's kind of a waste of time to list them on Poshmark because I'm, every day I'm ending 30 to 40 items on Poshmark and Mercari because they're just selling on eBay with the promoted listings. So that's something I'm not going to continue, but I tried. So if I'm going to cross post, which I like, then um, that allows me the um, flexibility of maybe one platform is screwed up. So one more thing, sorry, there's so many ideas. I executed from Andrew. So Andrew um, had an issue where his store was kind of turned off. He called in and um, called in and had them reduce some returns or something and then it triggered his store turning back on. I had a smaller version of that where I had a return request that was open and it said, waiting for buyer to receive refund. And that's kind of like on my end because I'm the one issuing the refund. So my store was acting kind of wonky. I called eBay and said, this person already received their refund. Can you close the return? They closed the return and then my traffic reverted back to normal. So I was like, that, there must be some kind of internal trigger. If you have too many returns or an open return request, that must hurt you in the algorithm, which makes sense to me. So that's one thing that I can't really execute on, but I wrote down as something that I want to do in the future. Um, so let's go with Andrew. Andrew, good morning. Um, do you have an idea that you want to share with the group or something you executed this month? Um, no, but I did have a question. So yep. did your store start, was, did that work for you? Yeah, so I was at maybe 1,200 a day, and then the, um, I was looking through my returns, and I have 28 open returns out of 1,600 sales or something. And um, my sales dipped to like 800 for no reason because I had like 40 days in a row over a thousand and then it dipped $400 in one day. Um, right. So then I checked the returns. I did it. The next day was still 800 and now I'm back up to that same rate again, but I did nothing different. Literally I have the same listings going up, same type of stuff. Um, my thought is too, like even with the video games, most of the video games I'm into for pennies, so most of the time, like now, my, my new thought would be just to refund them, just to not mm. keep that, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times people, I think they refund, they, they, they ask for a refund, they create the label yep. and yeah. with, with the expectation that you're just going to refund them then and they're going to be able to keep the item. For me, I'm starting to figure that into like, like loss prevention, like basically I'm figuring that as a loss. So if they want to get a refund, I'm just going to issue it right away. If they send it back, great. If they don't, 
I'm not out that much money. Right. Because I'd idea. rather I'd rather have the traffic and not have the same problem again. So like I figure what am I really spending by refunding them? So my new my new tip is to just refund everyone. I mean, maybe people aren't in that position where they can do that because of the cost of their goods. Mm -hmm. But with my cost of goods, it makes more sense for me to just refund everybody. So that I guess that would be my tip. I, I love it. Um, I'm trying to refund as soon as they, the, the refund shows tracking, but I could just say like, if you printed the label, I just trust you just actually return it. Thank you. Refund. You know, hopefully it comes back. Uh, cause it's not worth it to have the reduced traffic even for yeah. 20 You're right. Um, let's go with Nico. Nico, good morning. Hi, Chris. I'm sorry. I just couldn't get myself unmuted. So no um, anyway, so I'm just a big fan of the one thing book also. And so when I really looked at my business and what was going to really change it for uh, the better is just to have the same model on eBay that I do on Amazon. So on Amazon, because I'm paying more, I seem to really ride the sales rank and I'm very picky and I only buy things that are going to flip right away. But because I have a big house, you know, to store stuff in, I just got kind of lazy on eBay and I, I, would you know just store too much I, I really wasn't looking on at every particular item to make sure it was going to flip really fast so now i am replacing every old item with a new item that has to have like an equal amount of solds to the amount of active and i'm just not bending on that and it does make it hard when i'm shopping um because i do have to drive all the way to denver a lot so i have that investment in my time and my money so it was a huge cha change for me because i was used to just going to the bins and loading up um, on kind of mediocre inventory. So um, sometimes I go for the whole day and I only buy like 20 things, but it has really changed, um, you know, how fast my inventory flips. So that's really all I'm doing. That is great. I forgot to mention that a, a book that I want everyone to read, which is called The Innovator's Dilemma. Oh, okay. And it talks about how for most people, it makes more sense to incrementally improve what you're already doing than to reinvent yourself. If right. you, the only reason that you would want to reinvent yourself is if you like hate your life and you want to do something completely different. But the, the path to success usually is just incrementally improving what you do now, not starting something new because everything works essentially. And um, pivoting takes energy. And I've, re I've heard that statement in a lot of different books and it makes sense to me. Pivoting does take energy. So when you switch your, your, your focus to more items instead of just those 20, it makes sense that they would sell slower. Yeah. Well, what really um, cured me from that is because I do pay a staff person to ship and to edit and to keep track of everything. And so sometimes you don't value your own time. You don't see how much mm. time you're spending editing. And now that I'm paying for all that, I realize how that is not worth it in any way. I need my things to flip and just eliminate about 99% of the editing that we're doing in our business. So that's what I'm working on. That's a great tip too. set an hourly rate for yourself. That's worth right. it or not. And then you base that on your, or, I mean, uh, reference that with the person you're paying. Right. Cool. Thank you. Let's go with Scott race. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so this is interesting because I was kind of just brainstorming yesterday about some things. Um, and I don't know if I got this idea for you or where it came from, but um, if we were to rank the importance of our processes and effectiveness and efficiency, that contributes to higher profit, what areas can we improve immediately? And then what areas can we plan to make improvements in the long, long term? Um, and I think there's four variables to that. Um, it's kind of productivity, how much you can get done in a certain amount of time, the quality, so the results that you want to achieve without regards to time, effectiveness, the quality, or uh, effectiveness where quality is not affected by increase in productivity, to meet your desired result. And then efficiency, effort is not affected by the increase in quality or productivity to meet your desired result. Mm. So if you're able to play with those four variables to see kind of what the end experience is for not only the customer, but also people that you have working for you. So figuring out, clearly defining 
what you want to do and what experience you want everyone to have in your business. Cause I kind of thought that if you buy something from eBay, I don't, I mean, it's, there's a bunch of different sellers, so you're going to get a bunch of different experiences. And mm -hmm. regardless if you plan to have an experience or not, the customer is going to have some sort of experience. So plan what you want the customer to have from everything from viewing the listing to how you communicate to once they get the package and they open it up, right? Because if you buy an Apple product, that is a different experience than if you buy um, a $20 tablet from China. Absolutely. So, just kind of been thinking about those things. You know, Scott, it's also, if you, even if you buy from the same seller, you might get a different experience. Like if you look at the Adidas official store, they have like thousands of negative feedback and then hundreds of thousands of perfect feedback. So mm -hmm. internally, even the experience is not the same. That's, that's really important to look at. And also the, yeah, I like looking at that. Your overall productivity would, would kind of boil down to how much profit you make with the effort. So I don't, well, I'm probably going to ask you to clarify that later. Oh um, well, yeah. And it's just one more thing. Um, yeah. So it's, even if you're spending more time doing something, mm -hmm. you may actually be making more money in the long run because you're producing a better product. Yeah. And your store is a good example of that because if you look through the items in your store, you'll see some, you're selling items sometimes for twice as much as other people in the same category as a presentation perceived value is so low in their stores. Mm -hmm. let's go with Don Don good morning one tip you've executed uh, good morning yeah what I've been doing is um is sending offers and reaching out to to uh, to to uh, watchers mm -hmm. and that's you know and, and when I see my sales goal is slipping you know in order to you know I have my monthly goal my daily goal and when I notice it's slipping been reaching out actively, you know, like being a real salesman and that's, and that's paid off. You know, it's, it's been, it's been working, but by having those, those goals, it, you know, it, it kind of, it's a good gauge against how well I'm doing. So doing that. And then also with that, you know, using this um, HubSpot to, to categorize buyers and customers um, just by, you know, the potential to buy more and logging their contact information. It's kind of set up a, a nice flow with, with the, with the message, you know, right away when I book it, like call them again or whatever note seems relevant and just tracking these, these, these buyers. So, uh, you know, I was, I was slow this week, reached out, you know, and then did like two grand yesterday to get me back on target. So, um, that's, that's been working out and, and that's kind of, something that I learned here just about trying to CRM. So that's it for me. Don, you also sent me an email with a process that you wanted to automate, um, which is awesome. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the, that's the next step, you know? So once that gets going, I'll be um, using that VA to, to list the items. And then, and then I'm going to, you know, get a. Then once I get that streamlined, I'm going to get a photographer, since uh, my niece has got a boyfriend now, she's not going to be helping me out anymore. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, then I'll, then I can, you know, step away from the, that process. Okay. Let's go with Rich. Rich, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, actually, there, it, it's two things. One is um, uh, when I'm buying liquidation, since mm -hmm. that's where I have most of my experience in, uh, it's just looking for multiples of the same item uh, on the manifest. That's because uh, you're basically doubling your income in the same amount of time. Um, and this this next one might sound a little odd, but uh, uh, lowering my standards. Um, by that, I mean I don't have to get the exact amount that I want. I can go down a little bit and have a faster sell-through rate. Mm. Um, and that seems to uh, to work quite a bit better. Um, you know, I, I can't expect $15 profit on a $2 t-shirt. Um, I have to, you know, just see what's sold, go along, maybe a little bit higher than that, but, uh, um, just keep my expectations a bit more realistic. And, uh, yeah. 
somebody explained to me that it's like the how easy it is to replace that item. If it's easy to replace, then then undercut your competition. If it's not, then wait. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Let's go with Mark. Mark, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, the probably the best tip I've had since uh, this whole Corona thing kicked in is uh, getting up early. So I've been listing at 4 a.m. before my uh, wife and kids wake up every day. Therefore, I've at least got my listings out of the way before people start um, asking me questions every day. And then, um, yeah, that, that's uh, the thing. And, and today I'm working on contact form seven for uh, WordPress, trying to customize it and make it look a little prettier than the way it natively looks. Awesome. One more store I want people to check out that has a, a website is Greg Morris Cards. Um, very cool store. They have a thousand sales a day with zero negative feedback. That's very rare to have a store that does that kind of volume and that level of customer service. So, um, they have a cool website and a bio that makes you want to buy from them. Um, and it, it also, it makes you want to buy from them and it also generates, uh, supply. People send the stuff to them to sell. Let's go with Tiana. Tiana, good morning. What's one thing you've, you've executed from this call? Good morning. Um, so what I've done is organization. I think it's really important to start organized so you can stay organized. Because like we talked, I think earlier this week, about what do you do when you lose something that you sold and you can't find it to ship it out. So just starting off organized and staying organized so you know where your stuff is because that added stress of not being able to find your sold item is unneeded. What have you done with, to improve your inventory system? Well, I used to hang it all up, but then I was running out of room. So now I fold it, I bag it, and then um, each bin goes in, has its own letter and number. And then I just, since I'm a Poshmark, I just put that in the listing so I can go directly there, pull it, throw it in the box, and ship it off. Awesome. Let's go with Jaren. Jaren, good morning. Hey, good morning, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Um, if I had to narrow it down, I would say probably modifying like 5% of my listings on my store. Mm. I think it helps to keep the store manicured and keep it fresh. Um, and then also like cross-listing. So once I started cross-listing on Poshmark and Macari, like my sell-through rates just increased dramatically. Um, and so it helped me to to really get my my products out there and, and sell them a lot quicker. Um, and then lastly, I would say, this is something I read um, in Gary Keller's book, but he said, you have to inspect what you expect. And so if my expectation is that, you know, I wanna make $1,000 net profit, then, you know, like Don was saying, every day I'm having to look at those numbers to see where I'm at relative to where I wanna be. And so just simply inspecting that on a daily basis to see how I'm matching up, that's something that has really helped me out as well. So then I know, okay, hey, go modify 5% of your listings. Go in this listing and then sell similar or, you know, cross post or offer free returns on this one. So. I love that. Manicuring 5% a day. Also, there's 22 working days, Monday through Friday. If you did 5% a day and you sort it by, um, start date and start with the oldest listings and do 5% every day. You would cover your whole store every month and that would kill it because you would, you, you would manicure your store. Great tip. Brandon, good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, for me, it's, um, it's very much like finding a way to, re uh, create repeat customers. Like, um, Keep in mind when I say this, that, that at this point, probably like 95% of my sales are still local. So I'm just now really getting into the, the like eBay game. But um, what I've done locally, and if you can find a way to kind of replicate something like this, like with online, um, it has changed everything for me. So um, what I do is I have a, a Facebook group. I literally just named it Kansas City Youth Furniture. And in my phone, I have two like text replacements. Um, I have an iPhone, so I don't know if Android does this or not, but like, um, you know, I can just type like group one and I, one pops up and group two and another pops up. And basically mm -hmm. what I do is 
um, I have two messages. One is if somebody is, um, if they inquire about an item that I've just sold and it hasn't, I haven't taken it down yet, um, I will send one message and it just says, hey, I'm sorry this one sold, but I buy and sell furniture every day. Here's the link to my group. And then they'll come join the group and keep an eye out. The other one is, as soon as I sell a piece of furniture to somebody, I will send the other message and it will say, hey, just wanted to thank you again for your, for your purchase. At this point, obviously, this is somebody I've already met. Mm. Um, and, and I'll say, Here, you know, thanks again. Here's a link to my group. I do this all the time. You know, just keep an eye out if there's anything else you'd, you'd, ever, you'd ever like. And that, you know, people, they quickly, I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's not a big action step to just come join a Facebook group, you know. So, like, people do it. They join the group and then I'll get the same people will, will reach out to me. You know, some I've connected with several ladies locally who, you know, they like to buy quality pieces to refinish. So they'll make me kind of their go-to guy for that. Um, and it, it's worked a, a lot with, um, you know, the, the same kind of strategy has worked with, with sourcing as well, you know, through just having a mindset of staying connected with people. It's not just a one-time thing, um, but I want to make that relationship. Like I've, I've, created relationships with people who own houses who will call me to come clean it out when a tenant leaves i've created relationships with a guy who owns like a big warehouse who, who he buys big trucks of stuff um from like wayfair home depot all kind of places and he knows that mm. like if there's any furniture um you know he will call me and i will just come make an offer for a big bulk especially now that i have a box truck i can just come up to his place fill the truck up you know give him like he and he knows i'm a reseller you know, so I'll, you know, I'll just be like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll offer this to you for it. You know, I need to make at least double my money. I'm hoping for triple and I'll take it and leave, you know. And so because of just that mindset of like keeping that relationship like that, um, both on the, the sourcing side and the selling side, that's been one of the biggest, biggest um, steps in my business over the past month, I'd say. Is there such thing as furniture consignment where you live, where someone has a big warehouse and you drop stuff off there? You know, I, there may be, I haven't run into it yet. Like Kansas city is a big place, but I right. haven't really, I haven't really run into a furniture consignment shop yet that, that just does furniture. Yeah. Here there's a warehouse that's right next to a Costco. Somebody um, rented it and there's a big sign that says, um, drop your furniture off before you go to Costco. And they have a huge, <laughs> like, you know, 50,000 square foot place. That's just other people's furniture. And they appear to be killing it. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Because that's awesome. it makes you wonder, Costco's are kind of in, well, here, they're kind of out of the way in mm -hmm. industrial areas. So it's yeah. like that space around it, it's hard to like capitalize on that. But consignment and furniture is, is interesting. But I love what you mentioned with the refinishers. That's almost like working with a business customer that repeat yeah. buys. Yeah. And if I get several of them, which I have and continue to do, then that's you know, it is, they, they'll come to me for the pieces, like they'll reach out to me first, even to see, even see if I haven't posted, I have something I haven't posted yet, you know? One more idea I thought of with that was in, when I was in college, the, this, the business plan that won the business competition my year was a pool table company that contacted, they had a network of pool table installers. Hmm. Um, and they found out that in the pool table industry, the, the, um, the the prohibiting thing is shipping shipping is expensive for a pool table um so what they did was they con there's only maybe three companies that produce pool tables so they borrowed money and they bought a container of pool tables and shipped it to all 50 states so what they did was they connected with the pool table installers in 50 states to store the pool tables so they went on the ebay and um, they offered the exact same pool tables as everybody else the average shipping cost was $600 and they did free shipping oh, and wow. they did like $800,000 in sales a month. Like their, their first year, they made $10 million in sales because they were $600 cheaper than everybody else. Free shipping. And it was so cool because they dealt with the installers. The installers would deliver and install the pool table. Um, and that's one of those unusual situations where the heaviest item was the biggest opportunity. It was really cool. That's a genius. Uh, genius. Let's go with Matt. Matt, good morning. Morning. <clears throat> My tip today, this is just what I've been thinking about today. Uh, Got to make the tough decision. You, know, you can't outsource your pain. Um, 
I can't really, I don't know a way to explain it except through an example. Um, let's say you go to the grocery store, you buy a steak, you come home and you eat it. You just outsourced all of the pain of raising the cow, killing the cow, butchering it, and everything, right? Yep. You put that on someone else. They had to go through that labor and pain in order to create that steak. Now, what's the consequence of that? The steak at the grocery store isn't worth eating. It's extremely unhealthy, right? It's got antibiotics and all this other shit in it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the tough decision would have been to raise your own cow, slaughter it. Very painful, a lot of labor, but you have the healthiest steak you can imagine. I don't know how that applies to reselling, but that's just what I was thinking about today. You got to make the tough decision. You know, you can't, you can't kick the can down the road. No, I agree with you. The, the hard, hard decisions, easy life. Easy decisions, hard life. That's <laughs> definitely how it works. I want to add, and, go ahead. I was going to say, at the end of the day, if you keep making the hard decisions, you'll live a way healthier, more at peace life. So it, 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 it might seem short term <clears throat> like it's better to go with the weak decision. But uh, long term, you know, delayed gratification, you know, it's, it's only better. I agree. Um, I'm also um, trying fulfillment through Matt. So Matt's going to try shipping some items for me. And the system that we came up with took me, took me a while to execute, which is NC is North Carolina. E0001 is Matt's location in a storage container. Then 01 is the, the bin location in that bin. And then eight is how many ounces it is. And I'm going to print the label here and then send Matt a link to print it and execute that so now i need to figure out the email i send to matt once a day that has all the orders in it so that he can ship but this is a really cool experiment having somebody else do something completely for you because it you know i want it to be really really easy yeah andrew's got a good question is this is the steak good at least because short term yes short -term, long term yes. no <laughs> yeah. yeah that's the um you know why do people eat cake instead of going to the gym Imagine if you replaced like breakfast with a run. Hey, that's pretty yeah. much what separates us from the animals, man. Delayed gratification. That's right. That's right. Let's go with Liz. Liz, good morning. What's one thing you've executed this month? Good morning. Um, I think for me, um, with cross posting from Poshmark to eBay, um, I implemented the free shipping on, mm -hmm. on eBay across the, not free shipping, um, the free returns, mm -hmm. free returns and implemented with the, um, that thing. And, but I, and I just learned something this morning as far as the, I've got a, I've had a couple of customers with one has a refund that's sitting on the system and I had to call, I had to call in to get it to go away. And so I realized some of the things you do have to call on. I thought it would kind of, I could figure out how to get it to go away and so forth. But, um, hopefully that will help some of the traffic because I've been pretty slow on eBay for a couple of weeks now. And I was, I was going along there pretty good doing, a, you know, at least two or three a day. Um, and my Poshmark is still moving well, very well. So I'm going to, you know, keep going. And I love this call, the accountability and getting up at, for me, getting up at six in the morning is a major shift and it gets me going earlier. And I look up after a couple hours of work and I go, man, it's just now nine. So I'm, this has really been good for me, the accountability and getting up early. So I just put eBay's anchor store email in the chat for those listening. It's merchant support underscore NA at eBay.com. This is the support email for people who have an anchor store, which is 3000 items or more, but you can use it as a regular seller. They just don't advertise it. So merch, it, you should get an answer in two hours. So instead of um, calling, you can send them an email too. What I do is I put the um, whatever I need done in the title. Um, and that makes it quick for them. So return ID this, please close it for this reason. And I have that email um, template saved. Let me see if I have it. Yeah, so this is the, this is the email template that I have saved. Hello eBay, uh, this is my username. Can you help me close this return ID? It's been over a week and they haven't returned it. Right now they just extended this because it's coronavirus, but um, now it's 60 days. But it used to be just a week you could get it returned. So that's the email. And all of these text snippet things have saved me like millions of hours of time. So try to save your text things that you use over and over again. Um, let's go with David Mueller. Good morning. 
I don't know you. Maybe introduce yourself before you give a tip. Good morning. I have uh, I've done this call one time previously. Um, I mainly sell on Amazon. That's my full time, and I do kind of eBay on the side around a hundred or so listings. Um, the one thing I've been executing this month is pretty much just liquidating inventory. Mm. Um, on Pure Hustle podcast uh, a couple weeks ago, they said, you know, inventory light, capital heavy. So kind of what I do every morning is for, you know, about 30 minutes to an hour. First thing I do is just reprice my inventory on Amazon. I've got like 5,000 active inventory because I do books. Uh, so I start at the end and I just have been working my way forward every morning for a little bit. Um, I've seen some great, you know, increase in sales from that. Um, but I'm not going to go overboard and then spending that money again. So I'll get, you know, tied up in too much capital. Um, cause I want to have, you know, more capital if opportunities present themselves with, you know, store closures, liquidations, that kind of stuff. Um, one of the tips that I plan to be acting on today or this weekend is, um, one of the videos you made with the lady about buying all the shoes from mm -hmm. that thrift store. Yep. Uh, I have a whole lot of, you know, Goodwills and St. Vincent's around me, not too many like small time shops. And the Goodwills and St. Vincent's, they don't work with the uh, third parties, at least in my experience, very mm -hmm. much. Um, so I'm going to be reaching out to a couple of really local ones to see if, you know, I can maybe take a look at their inventory before it hits shelves, or even if it's been on the shelves to maybe get, um, you know, a good deal on like a bulk buy. So that's what I'm going to be working on today, coming up with a little script and then making some calls. So. The lady that I coached to do that, Tatiana, she's taking a, a break from reselling right now to move, but her goal is one no a day. So I'm like, you need to reach out every day yeah, to that somebody. Was, I was like, I got to start getting a couple of no's under my belt here because when I, I just actually rewatched that video earlier and, um, you know, that really stuck out to me. It's not really, you're not really looking for the yeses. You're just getting through the no's fast. Yeah, I remember... Before I did this, I'd sold cars on the internet with for Lexus and um, the, the, the sell through rate was 10%. So I had this here no nine times before I got to a sale and somebody told me, don't try to close two. Don't because you'll just like, you'll kill yourself trying to figure out how to close two out of 10. Just talk to 20 if you want to talk, if you want to close two, it's easier. So it, it's, if you look at reselling like lead generation like that, like if you talk to 10 stores, probably one will give you a bulk deal of some kind, especially a local one. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Let's go with Shaney. Good morning. Hi. Um, okay. So I'm working on upselling. It seems to be working for me. Hmm. This week I've had two sales and because we have time and, um, I just message them and I say, Oh, I also have, you know, similar item and twice I've sold, I've upsold them. Amazing. So it works to do that. And they like, some people are liking to chat maybe cause they're bored. I don't know. Uh, but I like the sale. Well, the only problem I ran into is that then, so sometimes I'll go create a new um, product a new thing that I have, like I'll have something, but I don't have it listed maybe. And I'll say, hang on, I'll make the listing. And then I try to send them the link and I get this weird uh, message from eBay that says uh, message error. The pay no fees personal link can't be shared in any manner on eBay. So how do I direct them besides just saying, go to my store and look for it. So there's two ways to do that. Um, the share link pay no fees one is awesome because I just tested it and I need to make sure, but it, um, the, if you make a listing and you use the share button and then you share that link with somebody off of eBay, there's no fees. You actually don't get charged a final value fee if somebody on social media pays for it that way. But if you try to share that link inside of eBay, it'll block it. It'll say, no, if you're going to play on our website, you have to pay the final value fee. So the way I got around that was using a bit.ly link. So bit.ly, that, that actually did work. So that link wasn't blocked. So I went and type, I copied the eBay URL, I typed that into bit.ly and that's awesome because not only did you upsell them, but you didn't pay a final value fee. 
Um, okay, so so go to the eBay, eBay listing, copy the URL, and use Bitly to, to push it to them. If, if you use the share link, um, the share link that has no fees, you have to filter it through Bitly to get it to work. But if it's just the listing URL, you don't have to, because that one you have to pay the fee. Or you, oh, can, I'm you can type in the item number in the, in the message, and they can search for that number to find it. Yeah, so all I'm doing is when I go to relist something, it says, do you want to share this? And it's right, right. copy link, right. and their own link doesn't work. Yeah. So That link is okay. only for not on eBay. Not on eBay. So do a bit.ly. That will work. That will anyway, work. it works, and it's nice because it adds it, – it, both times it added an extra $20 to my sale. You can also look up on the order details and get their email. Yes, that's a good idea. I haven't done that yet. And I don't think that that's spammy. I would actually like that as a customer. Oh, you have something else that I might be interested in? Great. You know, they're, they're when you not, when you download when you download your sales from eBay, does it tell you the item? Could you do kind of a database where you keep up with the types of things that they buy, yeah. and then you could hit kind of like the CRM that you guys are using? And keep up with that and say, oh, this guy bought this type of item. And if something new comes in like that, you can contact them. Absolutely. I mean, that, that would take some time to set up a system like that. Um, but that's yeah. how the people in the group that have scaled the largest deal with that. Like um, Brooks in the call is not here today, but he, if the email is a business email, so it's like um, at bobshardwarestore.com instead of Gmail, then he'll literally call that person. He's not afraid to call them and say, hey, you bought this from me. Do you want to buy more? Not, like an email to him is, is not even enough. And what Andrew was saying, it, this reselling as a contact sport, the closer to meeting in person, like imagine if they bought something from you and then you showed up at their house. It's a little forward, but that, that would be a way to really get a hold of them. Um, Scott, um, they allow you to use the, the email address for marketing on eBay. Yeah, I don't, otherwise they wouldn't provide it. Unlike Amazon, Amazon yeah. does not give you the email. And when you go to send somebody a link to a, a smaller item that they could purchase at the same, you know, so you can ship them both, how do you uh, make it cost less? You know, is there like any way to send like a couponless code or something like that? For them? Or for us? Yeah, for, um, you know, let's say you're emailing somebody with that Bitly link and it leads them to another item. How do you make that item less than it is in your store? A coupon list code. Okay. Yeah, that's in the same area as the, the, the promotions and sales tab in the marketing tab on eBay. And um, how do, where do you generate that, the, it, the coupon list? I will put it in the chat, but it's in the marketing okay. section. So you would go to, I'm sorry, promotions. So it's ebay.com slash promotions, essentially. I'll put that in there. This is, that's the link in the chat that leads you to where you would run your promotions. And there, there's six different kinds of promotions you can run. I made a video on that, but that's um, the code, codeless, or I'm sorry, couponless code means when they click that link, it can either discount just that one item or your whole store, whatever you want to, to send them. I like the whole store idea. Because especially if it's like, if you buy this, I'll ship it with this order. I'll pass the deal to you. Um, also, one more thought. Um, if you can't find the item for some reason and you email them a simple, hey, I'm sorry, I lost your item. Um, do you want to replace it with something else in my store or cancel immediately and get a full refund? That verbiage has been perfect for me. Um, I've avoided any issues with, losing an item with that verbiage because you'll get lucky and they'll say, Oh, no problem. Send this item instead or please cancel immediately. And then you don't get a defect. Um, but when I added the word um, or get an immediate refund, that really helped just get people on board. No problem. You lost it. I get my money back right away. No harm done. Let's go with Charlotte. Charlotte. Good morning. Um, 
this month I'm working on going through my inventory and finding stuff that I can switch to that uh, $12 free shipping, free returns. And it's okay. actually working really well for me. I'm just awesome. it. Awesome. So that, in case you guys didn't get the connection, I was noticing that a lot of stores sell things at $12 free shipping, free returns. I think it's to build the velocity of their store. Some people also do auctions instead. But the thing is with auctions, sometimes they don't pay. So I feel like it's, a, it's kind of a waste of time to sell something for really cheap and then have to wait for the payment. So you might as well just have it. Buy. And you'll even see big stores do 99 cents free shipping. And obviously they're losing money, but they don't want to donate it and they want that velocity to go up. Um, let's go with Alex Ross. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, I've gotten a lot of value out of this call. Um, the mo the biggest one would be to the email that you gave me to get the, the listing limits raised. And I hit the limit again, so I need to go through that process um, again. And then another one that I've liked is monitoring the traffic with the promoted listings and airdropping photos from my iPhone now. Then, uh, uh, so today I have a bunch of like boxes of Macy's returns that have about 115 uh, like swimsuits in them that are returned for some reason. And we want to like wholesale those off. And I wanted to get your guys' opinion on um, the, what I should ask for them. Who is going to be buying wholesale from you? Um, right now, the only person I have interested is my aunt. Where did you, she, did she just ask, how did she find out about you doing it? Uh, when we bought all the swimsuits, um, my, like, everyone in my family wanted to see them because they didn't mm -hmm. really believe that there were 10,000 of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, what I would do is get a manifest so people know what they're buying and then just start making lots. And then I'm happy mm -hmm. to post on, on Instagram and see if somebody will buy your lots. The, the guy that I can't believe, that guy that I posted on Instagram, he did $11,000 in wholesale orders from my one Instagram post, which I, I didn't yep. even put, I just said, hey, email this guy if you want to buy some wholesale stuff. And then he killed it. So like, actually he didn't really kill it. He broke even on a bad, a bad buy, which is also something that I don't want people to get discouraged. Like if you make a bulk deal and he doesn't make money, that's okay. Just you learn something and then move on. Okay. And Tiana in the group, you guys should exchange emails. Maybe she can get some stuff from you. It's not uncommon to, um, for people in this group to do business with each other. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. I joined a mastermind group one time where, um, the leader charged 10% for every business deal done inside the group. I'm like, how do you even track that? That's ridiculous, dude. Um, but yeah, that, that was, uh, um, I would encourage everyone in the group to share different, share different, um, stuff. Let's go with Brian Vent. Thank you. Good morning. Um, like many others, I've, I've, I've learned so much, but I think maybe the one thing that's I've seen the biggest result from is learning to, analyze that traffic report um, once and, and by experimenting with different things in your store. So once I went to the 1% promoted on my store, started to do turns on most items, like my impressions and traffic and, and all those metrics jumped way up. Like they went from about 30K impressions before that to averaging over 100K. And I was just looking at the report and, and the sales are, 82 percent over the past month so wow. so i think um getting familiar and learning to use that and like, like what you were talking about chris you know analyzing it and so in may i'll probably jump it up to two percent so then i can compare that versus the one percent to see if it's worth it versus the cost versus the increase in sales so i think that's a that's that's been a key um a key thing for me this month awesome let's let's go with scott Shrewberry, good morning. I don't know you yet. Maybe introduce yourself before you give us a tip. Good morning. Uh, yeah, this is the first time I've been on the call. Mm -hmm. So uh, Thank you for I've coming. been following you for a while. 
just haven't had a chance to actually get on the call. I just uh, I do this part time. I just have a smaller, I guess, what you call garage sale store. I definitely have been going through a lot of videos that you had on finding a niche. I've been mm -hmm. trying to figure out what my niche is. But I think the one thing that I've done um, that I've seen improvement on is going in and improving 5% of, of my items that I have in every day. Mm. And I've been writing in a journal and I can see already, I mean, I've probably sold in the last week three or four items that really haven't been touched since I've gone in. So, you know, at first I was just going in and just kind of not making a lot of changes. But when you said, you know, there's, if you're going to go in and look at them, you might as well do something and make it, make it better. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I definitely have seen a, a big change in that. I love that because I was hearing people saying, I just end it and relist it. I'm like, just take yeah. five seconds more and make it better than yeah. just relisting the same thing. Yep. Awesome. Thank you for coming. Sure. Thank you for having me. Let's go with Robert and Ruth. Can you guys chat? Hi. Good morning. How are you guys? Good morning. Um, it is our first time here as well. Um, so thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we do this part time. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, what has really worked for us is when we stay consistent on the amount of listings that we do. Mm -hmm. We use your spreadsheet to keep us uh, accountable as to how many listings we do and we have a crazy schedule my husband still works full-time and we both do it part-time so when we stay on our daily task and how much profit we need to make per item we sell mostly mostly shoes sneakers uh, that really helps us we see by the end of the week by before the weekend comes we see the sales coming in three or four pairs of shoes and so that really helps us when we just look at what we need to do consistently. Uh, and then uh, what helps us as well is we have some of our shoes with a consignment mm -hmm. and keeping that relationship with the previous people that have purchased shoes, with other uh, sneaker buyers, we know of when a shoe is going to be released and then we end up having to do trades. Mm -hmm. we, we just have really good communication with them and keeping that up really helps us and being able to uh, have a good relationship with our consignment store because now he allows us to send whichever shoe out there to him and we already have a set price of how much he will make and he i mean he has he's pretty much has the big overhead so it's a big blessing for us we just take our shoe and it sells mm. a lot faster sometimes i love it thank you for sharing yeah the that those connections for the releases are, are really valuable um let's go with sean sean good morning Good morning. Um, one big takeaway that I got from, honestly, a few of your videos was just to know your numbers really well. Um, so I've just been doing a lot of work into getting my numbers down and sell through rate and returns and all that stuff. And it's really, I mean, this is more of a personal thing, but it's definitely improved my confidence in jumping in this kind of head over heels because when you don't know your numbers, even you can kind of be like, uh, I'm not really sure where I'm at. Not, not to mention your friends and family who are like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, um, yeah, just knowing them for myself. And uh, it, it really has helped with the confidence and direction and aim as well. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think that confidence comes from repetition and knowing what's going on and clear, I'm sorry, clarity, repetition and clarity. Um, I also want to point out, um, Nico made a list of things that she does to improve the listing. So she's ending, relisting, changing the title, cropping a photo, changing the price. Um, other things that would help is adding photos. So instead of cropping photo, you could just add a photo that's like, thank you for shopping my store. M more photos ranks better than less photos. That would be the highest, uh, the most effective photo change you could do. Um, and a, um, a non-distracting background. You could also add item specifics. So going through your store and adding a couple item specifics to every listing would change it. Descriptions, um, even just copying and pasting the item specifics in the description helps that um, in a little blurb. So if, you, if, if Matt were to put like, thank you for shopping Matt's store, we have awesome deals. That's in every single description. 
then the algorithm is also going to think that that matters because it, it factors everything in. That's one of the little things that it might notice. So that kind of stuff and shipping and return policies have a huge effect too. And right now this is kind of a hack. eBay is not penalizing people for um, late shipments. So I'm offering same day shipment all the way up to noon and then apologizing if I can't get it out by noon. Um, and I'm not being penalized because right now the virus is allowing a little bit of a delay. So I'm just letting people know, hey, I ran out of time today. It's going to go out tomorrow. Let me know if that's a problem. I haven't had an issue yet, but it's allowing me to offer same day shipping without a penalty if I can't get it out on time. It's maybe an idea for you guys to, to temporarily boost your sales with the also, one more tip on that. If you sell replenishables like Alex um, and he has a, a lot of swimsuits, what some sellers will do is have two locations. They'll have um, two d different listings with different pictures, different titles, but the same item. Because you, you can't duplicate the identical item, but you could put like blue swimsuit number one on one listing, blue swimsuit number two, but it's the same skew. And then what you do is you change the location. So one's East Coast and one's West Coast. And that will make it rank differently. People on the West Coast, just like what Amazon will do, they will ship from the nearest warehouse. And that affects the, the buy box on eBay too, like what, what it is. And that's, that really affects the people who sell the same thing over and over again more, having it in different locations. Um, let's go with Steph. Steph, good morning. Thank you for joining on your iPad. Hi, good morning. Um, this is my first time on the call. I sell on Poshmark and Macari and I started a Shopify store. Awesome. Um, so what I have um, been planning or what I have been working on is planning, um, which is really like, what am I going to be doing once everything opens up? Um, I have been like reaching out to people I have been doing research so just what am I going to do once everything opens up um, and then I also have been working on cutting down my process time so if something takes me like 15 minutes how can I make this five minutes um, so I've been working on that like in overall of my business I love that that's I just bought a new stopwatch because I love that process so much. Um, and that's like the, um, my favorite thing. Cause then you know how, cause then you set a goal step. You're like, Oh, I need to do X amount of listings. And you actually know how long it's going to take. Cause you already yes. written down how long. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also, um, so how I'm keeping track of like, uh, I, I bought this planner. That's a 90 day gold planner. Yep. Um, and then it literally goes like, what are you going to do today to execute? And then yep. you put your time slots, how will it take? And then at the end of the day, you review yourself and then you get, you give yourself a 10 day review at the end of it. So that's how I'm like keeping track of everything that I'm doing every day. I love, I, that's my favorite thing ever. Um, because the, <laughs> the, well, the thing is, it's the review part that's important. Like I didn't, I didn't do that before. I, I've been keeping a journal for a while, but I didn't review it every 10 days. That's important to get, kind of go back and see what you've, what have you been doing for 10 days? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you'll go back and be like, what, what was I doing? I didn't do anything productive. So awesome. Love it. Um, and I recommend for everyone to get a visible clock where you work. So you don't have to like look at your, mine's like just right in my photo area. There's just a watch there. So makes it easy. and also if someone's working for you, then they kind of get an idea of how much money they're making per hour. And um, then they can say like, hey, I would be a lot more productive if you got me this. And then it can help. Let's go with Karen. Karen, good morning. What's one thing you've executed from this call? Um, asking. Just ask. Mm. That's it. Selling online enables you to be able to make sales, but you don't have to deal with the rejection of someone saying no, like you do in face-to-face -face sales. So you kind of get away from just dealing with, no, you've got to ask people. You've got to ask for what you want. And what's the worst that can happen? They just say no. But if you ask, chances are, you keep asking, you're, like you say, you're, you're going to eventually get somewhere. 
I feel like I have no soul left from all of this. The no, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't even have, it's like uh, my heart is now black because of that. <laughs> so many no's, but yeah, okay, let's go. They, that's, that's great. I love it. And you're right. It's way better to get it online than in person. Um, let's go. But, but I'm saying, go no, I ask people in person. I ask, oh. I, I find somebody who works for, for Lowe's for heaven's sakes. Okay. Right. How do we, who do I talk to about the non-productive inventory? Mm. Oh, well, let me tell you, here's the whole story on that situation. Let me call some, oh, really? Okay. Did well, you try geez. it at Lowe's? Yeah, yesterday. That's awesome. I love it. So you executed. Yeah. That's my, I, that makes me happy. I absolutely did. That's great. And that term NPI, non-productive inventory, a lot of corporations use that to get rid of stuff. That That's what we're doing. The 5% thing that you're doing every day to get rid of stuff. That is the, uh, that's getting rid of NPI. Um, April, can you chat? I don't know if she, oh, there I we go. I can. It was just really, everyone's awake. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see everyone. Um, yeah, this is a really good call today. Um, I believe someone already uh, offered this advice, but because I'm a smaller store, I don't mm -hmm. have as many, as a lot of people on the call, is just consistent listing. Um, and if you had, and it, uh, that's it, honestly, just even if it's just three items a day, don't feel pressure to get like 10 a day and get up to some numbers, just do what, it, you know, you feel accomplished. And then sales will, sales come, they'll come. I mean, theoretically, eventually, if you list three a day, you'll have three sales a day. If you, yeah, just, keep, honestly, if you just keep doing honestly. that, yep. And then it's the pressure. Then it's the pressure. If you do want a certain number in your store, you got you have to start listing more because your sales are just taking away from your items available. So it's like that's a good problem to have. That's a great problem to have. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. That one probably could be repeated a few times on everything that you do. Just consistency yeah. outweighs everything. Um, June, can you chat? Hopefully she can get. There we go. Sorry, I don't know if it can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, good. Um, I've been really down because I um, but I learned a lot from your your uh, this call. Um, my my son kind of get up the same time. I'm kind of always being bothered by him. So that's why I, I don't show the image because this. No worries. Sometimes, um, but I I do learn a lot. There's a lot of information, and sometimes I feel like overwhelmed, oh, honestly. But there. Are, there are a lot of information. I feel, I just feel I couldn't keep up. I really need to work harder. And um, yeah, my sales has been down a little bit, so I'm a little bit discouraged recently. But in general, it's still selling, so it's still good. Um, I just feel like I need to really uh, work harder than right now to make it. Um, I want to grow my store to a thousand items. Mm -hmm. Now I finally go to 600. Um, but, um, it's kind of hard. Sorry. Okay, no worries. Okay, no. no my son is kind of like... Make sure everyone in the group, as you grow your store, to try to maintain the sell-through rate. Um, and that's it. Because it's hard to go backwards. You can. I would rather you grow slower and just maintain the sell-through rate than get big. But appreciate everybody's time today. Um, thank you so much for coming. That was really a lot of information. Um, so anybody else is listening in YouTube land or on the podcast, if you want to join, just email me at Chris at daily refinement.com and you guys can try the call out and see if it's beneficial for you. Otherwise, everybody have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you guys next week or for you on the call. This runs seven days a week. I'm on it every day, but Saturday. So everyone have an awesome day. Take care.